Well, so there are a few more things that needs to be discussed to complete our understanding of fluid mechanics. And one of them is continuity equation. So let's talk about continuity equation and then we'll talk about Bernoulli theorem. So what is continuity equation? All right. So let's say there's a tube here and this tube is not uniform in cross section. Area here is A1 and area here is A2. And the fluid enters here with a velocity V1 and the fluid exists, exits the other end with a velocity V2. So can there be any relation between these two? Is there any constraint? Is there any argument you, we can raise on these variables? Well, there is one argument which is that the amount of water we feed in, the amount of water we are feeding inside is coming out from the other end. So we are not losing, our, I mean the fluid actually, not really water. So the amount of fluid we are feeding in is equal to the amount of uh, fluid which is coming out. So what is the amount of fluid which is being fed in? You see, every second, so V1 is the velocity or the speed, whatever you want to call it. We don't worry, we're just, just concerned about the magnitude. So in every, in every one second, we uh, push in water of length v1. That's how our velocity is defined. Velocity is amount of displacement per second, or speed is. Uh, let's call this speed. Actually, it's not velocity. We are talking. We are not really talking about vectors right now. So just speed. So speed is the amount of distance traveled every second. So in every second, we, we are pushing in V1 amount of water or V1 length of water inside the, in the inside this cross section. So what we have is a cylindrical surface, which is through which we are pushing in the water. And this is the amount of water we push in, which has a length V1 and has an area A1. So we know the amount of volume we are pushing in is nothing going to be but V1 times A1. This is volume. Similarly, on the other end, volume is V2 times A2. So we can say V1 A1 equals V2 A2. And this is called the continuity equation. So that is one of the equations that is important. If the cross section is the same, that means if A1 is same as A2, we know V1 will be same as V2. Okay, but let's say this guy here is at a height of, let's say this is the ground, is at a height of H1. And this guy here is at a height of H2. There's one more relation, there's one more relation we can draw from this figure. Certainly the volume in which is going inside is equal to the volume going outside. But there is one more thing that remains constant throughout this motion. And that is the energy. The amount of energy uh, is constant. So let's see what's happening. So let's t talk about the same fluid element here. So the fluid element here, let's draw this. Small fluid element. Let's say there's a small fluid element. And this fluid, what is the energy of this fluid element? Let's say the length of this fluid element is, uh, I don't know, say x. Let's say the x is the length of the fluid element. And area is A1. So this fluid element, first of all, will have what kind of energy? It will have potential energy, which will be uh, rho uh, mgh. mgh is going to be the potential energy of this guy. m is what? m is the, so okay. PE, let's make it very clear, is rho g h1 equals rho is the density of the fluid, which is not changing with time or height or distance, times g. I'm sorry, this is not mgh, this is rho gh, but mgh. Rho is the density. Okay. What is m? Mass is given as density times volume. How much is the density? Which is given. How much is the volume? A1 times x. This is the mass. So PE 
of this mass is nothing but rho a1 x um, g h1 because it's height h1 how about the kinetic energy well kinetic energy of the same fluid element is will be defined as half m v1 squared which is nothing but half rho a1 x v1 squared similarly now this is for the first one the, the one point one similarly for second pe will be mg h2 now this fluid element has gone up and sort of looks something like this something like that it has shortened in length let's call this x1 here because everything is one here so let's call this one so this guy this fluid element as has gone up has shortened in length because the volume should stay constant so this is x2 so this is x2 the the width of the volume thing has become x2 and the area is a2 because area has changed here you see the here area is going to be different than here area here this is the area a1 and this is the area a2 so a2 is the cross section now and x2 is the um, is the is the thickness or width of the fluid element is the same fluid element so this is mgh2 which should be shown same as the rho a2 this is x1 x2 h2 and similarly kinetic energy is going to be mg i'm oh, sorry equals to half m v2 squared and that gives us uh, it gives us half rho a1 i mean a2 x2 and v2 squared okay but there's one more thing which we have forgot to calculate and which is that um, this element there's a guy so just before this element you see here just before this there's a pressure p1 which is acting on this on this object on this like the the end of the fluid element there's a force p1 acting on on the fluid element and this force p1 is going to do work on it the amount of time as it as this fluid end element was entering as this is entering the this cross section so this let's say it starts from entering here during all this time this p1 is trying to push it inside it's trying to push the pressure p1 from behind is trying to push this fluid element inside so during all this time as it passes inside it does a work so how much work it does well w1 is equal to force times distance what is the force force is nothing but p1 a1 because pressure is defined as force over area so force is defined as pressure multiplied by area times how long it pushed well x1 distance similarly on the other end w2 you see there's a pressure from the top here in this case pressure is actually acting from the top so this is going to be double work done is going to be <coughs> f dot d equals minus p2 a2 times x2 all right so <coughs> we can we can we can say that initial energy plus work done which is initial energy is rho a1 or you can say work done uh, or we can we can do that we can do like this um final energy we can say final energy minus initial energy i'm sorry i made a small mistake here i said energy is constant through energy is not constant through energy is changing so energy is not constant but we know that change in energy equals work done so that was a mistake energy will remain constant if the pressure stays the same so i apologize for that energy is not constant energy change equals to the work done that is always true 
if there is no work done the energy stays constant so if there is a system which is intact there is no external force acting no work is being done the energy stays constant but in uh, but this is always true that energy change in energy equals to the work done so final energy minus initial energy equal to work done which is p1 a1 x1 minus p2 a2 x2 what is the final energy the final energy is rho a2 x2 h2 plus half rho a2 x2 v2 square minus rho a1 x1 h1 minus half rho a1 x2 uh, x1 i mean v1 square <clears throat> so this is final energy and this is the initial energy and this should be same as the work done if we reorganize the whole thing if we rearrange the whole thing what will we get we are running out of space but let's see we'll get um rho a2 x2 h2 plus half rho a2 x2 v2 square plus p2 a2 x2 equals rho a1 x1 h1 plus half rho a1 x1 v1 square plus p1 a1 x1 so this is what we get okay and simply by using this thing here this whole expression actually gets simplified it gets simplified to uh, let's use another sheet it gets simplified to rho 1 g h1 plus half rho v1 sorry this is not rho 1 this is just rho rho g h1 plus half rho v1 square plus p1 equals rho g h2 plus half rho v2 square plus p2 so this is a simplification and this thing is telling nothing but work done equals change in energy All right, what does this tell? This tells actually that rho g h2 plus half rho v2 square plus p2 or let's write it more generally. More generally we can say rho g h plus half rho v square plus p is a constant. This thing does not change. This thing did not change with height. As a, matter of time, as a matter of fact, no matter which height we choose, we'll still end up with the same kind of inequality. So this is what we deduce from our this formula. And this is called Bernoulli theorem. And we'll talk some examples in the next two lectures.